And all of you are working to bring your communities with you in the various tasks as both of volunteers and professionals. And, and many of you I know have different hats on here today, but maybe two or three different hats. Uh, and all of you are sitting in that crucial seat sort of as an interface between maybe government, maybe business, or the work you do, and the community that you serve. And sitting in that linchpin um, can sometimes be uncomfortable and sometimes can be difficult. And we all know that community participation and getting community engagement is a very time-consuming, resource-consuming business. That is our vision, but it really is about what we've been talking about, bringing people together. So the social aspects of the work we do, and then the outcomes, protect, link, restore, healthy habitats. And that's our geography at my level, from Western Victoria, the Grampians, through New South Wales, ACT, to far north Queensland. I always say that good land management is good conservation management and vice versa. I don't need to preach that because you guys understand it. And I'm probably not going to go further. That's all I'm going to say. The other thing, though, is the investment that has gone into the GER. It needs to use business language, a, a value proposition. And the reasons behind that, if you think about it and that landscape, in Australian terms, it's the areast, area of highest rainfall. It's got the greatest altitudinal change from the coast to Kosciuszko. It's got multiple habitats, different climates. And it's got, which is so important with, other, with climate change and other threats, it's got refuges from drought. And if we achieve our vision, um, we, we've got the opportunity to create escape tunnels, safe refuges for those species that don't move. What I'm going to do this morning is really talk you through a little bit of the background and the history of the KW, just up until the point that we're at now, just so that everybody's on the same page as to what's been happening, why it's been happening, and really sets us up for the conversation about the next year ahead of us. And I guess where I really wanted to start from was why are we working in the Canangra Boyd to Wyangla Link? As Rob mentioned, we've had seven partnerships that were funded through the New South Wales government. Um, we're a really small team. Each partnership takes time and effort to work with. There are relationships there that we build. It's so important that we maintain those relationships. But in um, early 2012, we had an opportunity to be able to look or explore an eighth landscape as part of the Australian Government's Biodiversity Fund. So really, the concept of KW has been around for only a short while. It's one of the newest landscapes that we've been working in. But I think the fact that we've, uh, we're wanting to work in this landscape, in addition to the other New South Wales landscapes we're working in, shows just how important this landscape is. Well, today, I think, is looking at the corridor as a whole um, and very much a lot of the same issues. There's a broader group of people here today because there's people from the eastern part of the corridor, people from outside the, the corridor zone, the technic technical people, uh, advisors like um, Jeff Kay. Uh, so it's really looking at the bigger picture of issues and one of those, of course, is you know, fire management, a fairly topical issue today. Um, cultural heritage management once again. And, and really today I think we'll talk more about involvement of the Shire Councils and what role they can play in terms of uh, dealing with uh, wildlife and habitat management. I just see the opportunity, as uh, Mary Bonnet, Bonnet was uh, pointing out earlier, there's a lot of individual land care who are doing their work um, very well in their area. Whereas if we can harness the whole community together, um, I think it'll just be a fantastic outcome. And if it is the world's largest conservation project, it, it will just speak for itself and, and hopefully encourage further projects like this and investment from state and federal governments, which is what we desperately need. The Gratis and Ranges is a natural match to what we're working on because the natural woodland extent goes from Toowoomba all the way down to Victoria and it basically is the inland step of the Great Eastern Ranges extent too. So 
by knowing what's happening in the interior section of the Great Eastern Ranges, you'll be able to know a lot about how the Great Eastern Ranges initiative will have tractable benefits across that range and into these landscapes coming down into the slopes. We need to pick up on the education. We probably don't sell ourselves that well and a lot of other groups probably don't do the same. So by coming together as a larger group, um, we should be able to get to a lot more people, get the message across that we need to get across. So it's very much starting with the individual property owner saying, I want to do something about biodiversity conservation, but I know it's not. it doesn't just stop at the boundaries of my place. So I kind of want to get together with people in my region to also do something that fits into a bigger picture. Um, and if they can think about it that way, it's more about stepping stones across the landscape and, and trying to join up the individual efforts um, voluntarily by people on their own properties into a bigger picture, which of course is also what Great Eastern Rangers is all about. I think it's great to be able to go out to a landholder and say, hey, you know, you're putting in two hectares of veg and you can, you know, you're managing to keep your pig numbers down. It's not only helping you, it's helping, you know, the whole of the eastern eastern side of Australia and, and allowing them to be part of that bigger picture and, and, and so I think that's that gives people a lot of pride and ownership in the project. You know, we recognise that there's a lot of things already happening in this area and we're here to um, build on those things that are already, the good things that are already happening in the landscape and um, you know, where, where we can add value to those um, exi existing projects and um, communities that are already doing good things. Um, I guess that's what, you know, really what the Great Eastern Rangers, Kenangra, Woitawangla Link is all about, it's just like bringing everybody together. The KW landscape is a natural migratory route for a whole range of species. It's got a wide range of existing native species that reside in only this part of the landscape that have been lost across much of the central tablelands of New South Wales. And it's also a place where we have the opportunity to act. A lot of people already doing good stuff on the ground.